Hey, I'm Joe Tobiasen and I am a wedding and nonprofit photographer based in Seattle, Washington. And I have two computers. And I know that's really like the world's lamest flex. Um, but therefore, uh, I have to do a lot of work where I'm either like trying to work at a coffee shop or my co-working space or sometimes on, I'm on the road. And with that, um, I do most of my editing in Adobe Lightroom. And Adobe Lightroom, for all of its strengths, is not necessarily the greatest program for jumping between computers. Um, but over time, I feel like I've developed a pretty decent system for making images and importing them and jumping back and forth between the two devices. So I thought I'd make this video here to explain the way that they use the collections and the um, catalogs in a way that is more or less succinct and allows me to move between the devices without um, losing the stuff that I've already done. So. Let's get started. Um, in this sense, there's kind of two different situations that I wanna talk about. The first being that I will have shot something and imported it into the big computer. The big computer is where I store everything. It's connected to my main hard drives that are connected, that are backed up to uh, the cloud and all those kind of things. Whereas the other laptop, sometimes I do, when I'm on the road, I'll take photos, I'll import it, and I will do a little bit of editing and stuff. And then I'll transfer those back to that main computer um, you know, they'll have gotten imported to like an external hard drive or something first. Usually this is when I'm on the road. And then I come back and I'll transfer them back over. There's kind of two different situations here that I'm going to, so, that I want to talk through. The first one I'll talk through is if I have used the main computer and I want to edit on my laptop. So, let's say I've gone out, I've shot a wedding or something, so we'll just... Good enough. So, just random photos, it doesn't really matter in there. And the first step of this is gonna be the same on either device, the way that I import the photos, but it is an important step that I do wanna explain. So I use a program called um, Photo Mechanic. And Photo Mechanic does a really good job of importing things and labeling them and helping you score them really quickly. And that really, it makes things go a lot faster once you get into Lightroom itself. Okay. So as soon as you load that in there, usually both Lightroom and Photo Mechanic are gonna pop up because I have automatic imports turned on and I don't want that with Lightroom. So we'll make it go away. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to go into, so I have my folders here and on my computer for video and then I have here the LR. What I do is I make a folder that has the date and then the name of the shoot. So in this case with those, it's 2000, so I have the date, which is the, the last two digits of the year. So 20, and then 02, and then um, I kind of was testing this last night, so this is what from yesterday. We'll just make a new folder in here for today. So it is 200225 LR on two comps. And so that's the name of the folder in there. Hit open. And now I'm gonna go into here and I make in the, the ingest, I change the name to have the same, the same, the same folder structure. So that's just right in there. And then I'm gonna also go in, I wanna reset the variable, which is the, um, the sequence that as it imports, it changes all those. So I just wanna reset that back to zero. I'll hit import. Now, if I have multiple memory cards and stuff, I, those often get mixed up and stuff. And so, or even if I'm shooting two cameras simultaneously, it's impossible that the, you know, you can kind of only import one at a time. So the number and the, the variable is not gonna be a sequential thing that goes like my first shot of the day through my last shot of the day, but it just keeps everything in order. But then when I sort it by, um, by capture time inside of Lightroom, that's when it'll probably get that'll work out, but I, I, I don't care. Um, so I'm gonna quickly ingest those into there. There's all the photos I just took. Um, so the next thing I want to do is I want to quickly, I want to score these. So all I'm doing is I'm going through and I just hit a bunch of random scores of, you know, three stars or whatever. Um, those are done and that's it. That's all I had to do. Um, and now those have been saved and I will open up Lightroom Classic. Um, now when I open up Lightroom, it has that same import dialog that I did before and I can go and I can find it. One thing that is super nice about this is that um, Photo Mechanic allows you to be scoring as you're importing. And so on a wedding night, 
um, as I've gotten home and I'm importing things into my computer, oftentimes I'll be going through and I'll just be doing a basic, a basic uh, score of my photos and mostly just trying to separate the photos that are out of focus, that are blurry, that just are unusable from the ones that are good. And it just helps me speed things along a little bit because I will look through these photos quite a few times so then I'll continue to cut down. But if I can, my that first time, let's say I took 3,000 photos on a wedding day, if I can knock that down to 1,500, 1,200 on that first pass, that just makes things go a lot faster and makes some of the, the next steps I'll be going through go even quicker as well. So I'm gonna have it into here where I have things stored, LR on two comps, import it, and we're good. Um, so pops into Lightroom. And again, all of these steps are exactly the same whether I'm on loading it onto the big computer first or this, the, the laptop first, and that's all the same until this point. So now I've loaded onto here and you can see that those three stars that I gave those photos when I was scoring them, it's now appeared here in Lightroom. And so it's separated um, these all on there. These are the photos that I said were originally photos. Like these are the photos that I like. These are the quality ones. So now let's say I, this is the next couple days later of that same wedding shoot. And I wanted to go to my coworking space where I was going to do a bunch of editing. So. I don't want to have to take my, my, my hard drives with me. I don't want to have to move these photos onto a hard drive that just gets big and convoluted. So what I want to do is highlight them all and then I'm going to go file, export as catalog. And that will then take all these photos and we'll put them on a catalog. It makes it a lot easier to transfer. The most important thing about the catalog though for this step is make sure you build and include smart previews. So one thing I did that it was I had that selected, so it's only selecting of that, like whatever I took, like 20 photos in that couple seconds there. Um, it's only selecting the ones that I marked as three stars. So it's in that sense, like, again, that would have said it's so if I took 3000 photos on a wedding day, it's only showing the, the, the 1300, the 1200, the whatever that I want to work, that I want to start working on. So um, and now I will do that same naming structure, two, 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 five. LR on two comps unedited. So the, the naming structure again is important on this because that date, uh, let's say I'm gonna I'm gonna work on the laptop for a few days and then I want to move that back to the main computer, but then eventually I want to move back to laptop or right? like any do those back and forth. By using this date structure, as long as I'm only doing this once a day, it makes it really easy to not get those confused. And then say unedited just because let's say I finished today, I bring it back, I don't want things to get confusing. So that's all that. Then with the smart preview is collected, I'm just gonna put that on the desktop and we'll be ready to go. So as that's going, I'm gonna to pop over my laptop here. So now that that's done, um, I'm gonna pop over here and you can see that the folder that I created there with the, is, is on my desktop. And I have both the LR catalog and then I also have the smart preview data. They're both inside this folder. So that's really important that it has both of those. So now I can take this and all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to airdrop that over to my laptop. Now as that's sending, we'll slide over here and grab the laptop. I can start looking at things. And this takes a second. All right, so I finished and now that is right here inside of my uh, download folder and I'm able to simply I can either open that as it is and just edit in that one um, individual catalog, or I can um, import it into if I have a bunch of other catalogs and I want to prefer. I'm just going nice and quick into here, so I'm just going to open this as it is into its own catalog. One of the reasons I do this all the, with the multiple catalogs onto this computer, but only using the one main catalog on the, the other computer, is that you can only sync one catalog at a time with your Lightroom mobile, with your Lightroom CC account. Um, and therefore, if you are creating multiple catalogs, it doesn't allow for that syncing that stuff that you know, maybe I do want to have access to that on my phone down the road. And so that's why this computer basically only gets the one catalog, but this one's going to get a lot of different ones. So now it's uh, it's been loaded onto this computer. I have all of those photos. So it has just the ones that I, ta I, I talked about before with just the smart previews. Now I can go into those, let's say I want to, now I can go into those. And one of the reasons I do use Lightroom uh, Classic to do all my editing is because as you can see it's binding here. That's a program called PFixer that I use that allows me to use hotkeys. So I can adjust my exposure, contrast, dark, all those kind of things just using keys here without having to use the sliders back and forth. And I just find that to be faster for me and so that's probably the reason I really like this program. So that said, we'll go through and we'll do those. 
we'll say I don't like that photo, I don't like that photo, and that one, and we'll make some changes. So we finished, and now in this, I have taken all those photos and knocked it down a few that I don't like, and I want to be done. Now again, you could export just the three, just the changes, just the ones that you want again, but I do actually want all of my new edits to uh, to replace the edits on the old computer. But all that you have to do is go in here and I'm gonna highlight all of the photos, Command A, and we're gonna go back, and just like we did before, we're gonna export as catalog. But this time, when I go into here and I'm gonna write in the date, 202, uh, 25, uh, I'm gonna write complete, just so that I know what it is. And I do not need to include the smart previews this time because I have smart previews here and I have the um, edits on this computer. So all I have to do is just, I'm just gonna export the catalog that has the edits in it. So I'll hit that export catalog button. This actually becomes a step that I can do back and forth as many times as I'd like between the two computers. But that's how we're, in order to be able to access them. So now, I'm gonna slide back over to the big computer. So that's already been exported. And all I'm gonna do is once again, airdrop it over to my main computer. Now, this one, because as I was saying, this has its main, um, its main catalog that I wanna be working out of. Once this is finished downloading from airdrop, rather than opening it like I did before on this computer, I just wanna import this one. So I want it to replace. So we'll go into here, we'll go to import from another catalog from file. And then I'll go to downloads and right here complete. And this time, as you can see, there's only the one folder, there are the one file within the folder. This could be before it had both the preview file and the catalog file. This time it just has the catalog file, which is totally normal. So I choose and I'll, I'll select that. And it's gonna prepare those. Now it gives me this dialog here. And so you're gonna go into here and you have all these new ones. Just make sure you have these checked and then you're gonna go and it's gonna develop just the metadata and the develop setting settings. You don't need it to replace the negative def files because you don't have any negative files We're moving over here. And it also could say preserve old settings as a virtual copy. This actually want to uncheck because again, if I'm gonna go back and forth, it's gonna start creating copies on copies on copies. And with the volume of photos I'll be doing, I don't really want that. So this is by unchecking this, I'm saying, I don't care about the old settings, you can replace them. So it's gonna import those, and we'll go through, it's gonna run it. And that's, the, so these are the photos that have been brought over, and we can see now that LR2 comps, we just have these, because again, I took a couple photos that I didn't like, so I have less here than I did before, it's down to the five. I go in here, it's developed, you can saw that I was, I was playing with the things, and those develop settings have been, have been moved. Obviously it feels a little bit weird doing this all just on black photos, but that's kind of the point. As I was saying before, the reason that I keep this with this one catalog is because I want these photos to be accessible on my multiple computers and multiple devices. So let's say down the road, I want to have access to this photo and not have it be like, let's say I'm on my laptop and I'm just on the road and I want to be able to access a couple of my best photos, or I want to have um, access to these on my phone or something like that. The way that I would do these, this is when I would make a new collection. So I'll take these photos here, and I'll do create collection, and I can either make something kind of generic for like a full year, or I can make something super specific. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just gonna be really specific in this situation and just keep calling it that. And we are going to do that, and then I'll also hit that sync with Lightroom button. And when I create it, but I'm not gonna do that because there's another way to, to do this. You can also get down here in this little button, sync with LR on two comps. So it's now taken those six photos and it's synced them to Lightroom CC, which is the other program here. So again, I'm showing the ways that I jump back and forth between the computers. So I can open up Lightroom CC, which is down here. And eventually that should, um, that will appear right down here. Like I have um, Erica, it's like the way the film that she takes is right down here. It will appear in this in this zone right down here at the bottom. And that's where these photos will have access to them on another computer. And that's how I can then make those edits. As you can see here with wedding photos and stuff, these are all things that have been synced between the two devices and allow me to access them at any point in any place. But they're all living within the main, uh, 
catalog here. They just are various collections that they're stored in for organizational purposes. Okay, so let's say that we're in the opposite situation. I am traveling and I want to take photos and I have access to them. I load them onto my computer. I load them onto this uh, hard drive or whatever. And I've done a few days worth, worth of work and they're all on, on here and they've all been edited and those kind of things. And I want to transfer that to this main computer. And so I want to make, move them over to the main computer. The thing is, is that Lightroom is very much stored in its hierarchy. So these photos being in the catalog are stored on this computer and this computer knows and that catalog knows that they're stored on this computer. So if I do this same system and I move that over there, this computer then will be like, okay, I want to find those photos on this hard drive. Well, I don't want to plug, if this computer isn't plugged in, this hard drive isn't plugged in, then that's not exactly the way that I want to do it. So what I would do is, let's say I would do it kind of like I did that second time where I was exported with just the just the Lightroom catalog. I would not use the Smart Previous because they're, they're just kind of superfluous in this moment. And I would take those and I would send that over to the, to the computer here. Then what I would make sure of, then I would take the, the external hard drive. I would connect that to the main computer and I would simply go into the finder and I could take those and I would copy the photos from the external, from the, the portable drive onto the main computer. Then make sure you unplug that, that, um, this hard drive here from the computer before you start to look for it. So again, then I have the catalog, uh, the catalog that is sent from Lightroom has sent over here. So at this point, you've already you've connect, taken all the photos and you've moved the catalog onto this computer, but this catalog still thinks it's looking for the photos on this particular hard drive. You've also taken the photos from this hard drive and copied them onto the main computer. Then all you simply need to do is you go into here with these on the, the, the main catalog, open it up, and you just hit the photos missing button here. And you might want to hit like Command A or something beforehand, but that would allow you to go find it and you can go locate the photo. It's going to give you this thing that says it thinks it knows where that should be. Just hit the locate and then go to the new location where those are stored. Again, not on the portable, but on the main external hard drive. Then you'll go through and as soon as you find one, Lightroom is smart enough to like find all of its sister ones. And then at that point, this hard drive just becomes a backup. Everything has been copied onto this main one. So then if down the road um, and it's resynced itself into here, it's found all the new photos that are on the hard drive then you'd want to re-export that same catalog as we did the first time if you wanted to edit it on the laptop. So it's a little complicated and I hope it all makes sense. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, please uh, write them in the comments below. I hope I can make this a little bit clearer on how to use Lightroom on two computers. Thank you so much for watching.